Okay. So this is, you know, I have to say this strategy doesn't sound that important, but I have to tell you for beginners it's critical because I'm sure all of you have taught beginners and the one thing they don't know how to do is to start. They don't know where to start or how to start. So showing them how to hold a glass, how to tilt the glass to just the right place and where to look as a place to start is huge. So if you show them that, they have a place to start and they know how to be consistent with what they do for tasting. So the eyes definitely have it. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I'm just looking to make sure there's more and more. Uh, there's a question, Douglas in Chicago, what kind of light is good or bad? Douglas, the best kind of light is uh, natural light, sunlight. Uh, beyond that, incandescent light if you're inside. And then the least desirable light is fluorescent light. Okay, so we're going to move on to the second strategy, and this is called the basic set. So what is the basic set? Well, there are two premises here. And the first premise is that all olfactory memory is based on life experiences. That's a, that's a no-brainer. The second premise is that over 90% of the human race is visual dominant internally. And what I mean by that is that practically all of us think in pictures and movies. So if you think of how we think, uh, we have five senses and see, smell, feel, taste, uh, I forgot something. But internally what we do is we make pictures, we hear things, and then we feel things, either kinesthetically or emotionally, okay? All right, with those two things, what is the basic set? So the basic set, here we go, this is the 80-20 rule. And what it means is that the 30 or so aromas found in over 80% of all wines. So top tasters own these aromatics, own them. And not only that, for a top taster, their set of aromatics is probably in the 50 to 80 range. So there's many, many more. But for, for everyone who's studying or, you know, tasting for an exam or just trying to be a better taster, this set of 30 aromatics is critical. All right, so this entire page is all about fruits fruits that you would find in both uh, red and white wines. And with white wines, of course, we have five different fruit groups. You've got apple and pear. You've got citrus fruit. You've got tropical fruit. You've got stone fruit or uh, pit fruit. And finally, you've got melon and other miscellaneous fruit. For you know red wines, you've got black fruit, red fruit, blue fruit, which is kind of a free electron, but uh, they're definitely blue fruits. And then finally, dry fruit. So if you take a look at all these, these are really, really common fruit type aromatics and flavors in wine. So the second slide has to do with non-fruits and then inorganic and organic earth and oak influence. So raisin and prune, of course, has to do with raisination. I think of uh, something like Amarone with that. Roses and violets for floral. Mint eucalyptus, uh, which is key for certain New World type wines such as uh, wines from Australia. Bell pepper, critically important in terms of pyrazines uh, and Sauvignon Blanc and also Cabernet family wines. And then the next set, vanilla, cinnamon, toast, coffee, chocolate, cloves, all have to do with oak influence and torrefaction. And then finally, chalk for uh, inorganic earth and mushroom and forest floor for organic earth. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to ask you to consider the following and your memories. So I want you to think about the following aromatics, and the first one is green apple. And as you're thinking about green apple, you know, what color is it? What's the texture? Think about the acid level and how high it is. The next aromatic is yellow peach. And think about the texture of yellow peach. and It's almost mushy. And think about how it smells. Think about the juice, how sweet it is, and how sticky. Everybody got that? Okay, moving on. The next one is lemon, obviously a major citrus fruit. And a major citrus fruit, to me, the most sour. But also think about how different a lemon is in terms of its components, its peel, how oil it is, the pith, how bitter it is, and then the juice, how sour it is and how it makes you squint, and how that acidity feels on your teeth and your gums. All right, next is a black cherry. Obviously, a major component for Cabernet family wines. 
and how really ripe black cherries are sweet, but they're also very acidic at the same time. And the skin is a little bit tannic. Next up is a rose, and, and one of my favorite uh, aromas in the universe is an heirloom rose, how perfumed it is, and literally how multi-layered it is. And then bell pepper, we mentioned pyrazines just a moment ago, but bell pepper in terms of its pungency and its texture, okay, that's a really good one to know. And then pepper, in this case, black pepper or white pepper. Very important, too, and that's one of those uh, prime factors we're going to talk about. And then mushroom and forest floor, okay? And mushrooms in any kind of form. And then forest floor, which is so complex. You know, the, there's a, a term that I learned in middle school, junior high, uh, putrefaction decay. So, you know, the, the decay of organic material. And you get that a lot. I'm thinking of uh, any number of wines from old Bordeaux to certain kinds of Burgundy, especially from Rhone, and uh, even southern Rhone wines, Grenache blends. And then finally, coffee. And as much coffee as you drink, it always smells amazing. So the question is, is how did you remember all those things? And for, I would say, practically all of you, you probably made images from your memories. <clears throat> and in some cases, those images were probably movies. They were your experiences with those things. So the, the important connection that we made there is that we got the software up and running in terms of you being aware that you generate images for smell memory and taste memory. So now we're going to do just the opposite. We're going to work at it from the other end. Here's a picture of green apples. You can imagine what it's like to pick those up. The skins are very firm. In fact, the skins, when you taste them, are tannic. And they're juicy and crunchy and uh, high acid and very sour. And next up, a, a picture of yellow peaches. And again, these are really, really ripe. And the texture, you know how the texture of the skin, maybe a little fuzzy but how juicy and sweet they are and how sticky the juice is. And a lemon, uh, very complex here. Again, the difference between the juice, how sour it is, the pulp, that texture, the pith, how bitter it is. And then, of course, the lemon peel. And then black cherries. Okay, And here again, the, the dichotomy between the sweetness, the ripeness of the fruit, but also the acid. And also knowing that the skins are tannic. And then this is uh, one of my favorite, again, aromatics in the universe. And this is an aromatic rose. I took this picture in the Mendocino Botanical Gardens. And a rose is an aromatic that you get in a lot of red wines, Cabernet family wines, Pinot Noir, Burgundies. And then bell pepper, again, for pyrazines. This is critically important to know for Sauvignon Blanc or Cabernet family wines. And then pepper, black pepper here to me, which is the heaviest, and then white pepper, the lightest, and then green pepper, which when ground is very, very fruity. And here, this is really important. Why important? This is rotund bone. So you, you, if you don't recognize pepper in wine, <clears throat> Being able to recognize Gruner Veltliner for Austrian wine will be always difficult. But, you know, pepper for Northern Rhone Syrah and Southern Rhone Grenache blends, but also uh, more Vedra in terms of Bandol. Very important component. All right, coffee is next. And obviously this is a oak marker. And then mushrooms. And these are pretty heroic mushrooms. Okay, mushroom and forest floor. All right, <clears throat> using the basic set, and this is literally having to do with practicing without wine in hand. And in the next slide I'm going to show you in a second shows you where you can download all the exercises with the basic set. So you work in terms of images and words and literally saying whatever it is internally, and then images alone, and words. And this whole way you're practicing in sequence your memory of these aromatics and making sure that you own them. So that if someone says the word, what does bell pepper smell like, it's immediately there. And if it's there, certainly you can identify it in any wine. 
But I think, again, the critical thing is that you practice these aromatics uh, away from tasting. Okay? And the links, and we'll get you those links for some reason. They're not on this page. But we'll make sure that you get the links so you can download. There are two different PDFs and four modules for the basic set. Okay, so Yuki, uh, I'm trying to speak directly into my microphone. Okay? Okay. All right. <clears throat> so complexity defined. And I know for all of you who teach beginners, uh, and, and there's a common complaint, and the complaint is there's so much in a glass of wine I can't possibly keep track of it. So the next slide, with all due respect to the vegetarians and vegans out there, is how would you de define complexity in food? And that's pretty simple, a cheeseburger. Okay. So if you think about the fact that there are seven taste predicates on the human palate, and those being sweet, sour, bitter, salty, umami for savory and texture, kokumi for dairy and calcium, and fat. A cheeseburger has six out of the seven. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the only one it doesn't have is it doesn't have bitterness. Of course, unless you burn the burger, there's radicchio on it. So if you think about that, if someone can remember what a cheeseburger with all this stuff on it smells and tastes like, they can remember it. They have the software to remember what anything in a glass of wine is. All right, so strategy for teaching beginners. Once you get beyond the glassware stance and you show them how to hold a glass and where to look, what you want to do is create an awareness that when they remember what something smells like or recognize it, they create an image. <clears throat> and in doing so, they're using their life memories or aromatics. <clears throat> 